Hello, everybody. This is uh, Burl Schwartz from City Pulse. And uh, our community lost a great civic leader yesterday, Jack C. Davis. Jack was an attorney, uh, but much, much more in our community. Uh, he was a leader in education, serving twice as president of the Lansing School Board. He was an advocate and uh, supporter of the arts. Uh, you, you, know, you would not only see him at uh, the symphony and uh, the Wharton Center and <clears throat> small productions around town, but uh, Jack helped out in many ways uh, behind the scenes uh, financially to uh, improve the arts in our community. And he was active uh, behind the scenes as well in politics. Today I have with us two people who worked with Jack and uh, uh, feel as I do that we've lost a, a dear friend, uh, former mayor of Lansing, Birch Bernero, and uh, former school, Lansing School Board member, Robin Lewis. Uh, uh, Verge, let, let's start with you. Uh, when did Jack first uh, get on your radar? Um, I think uh, when I was in the Senate, um, and then, of course, even in a lar much larger way when I became mayor, um, and actually when I, when I ran for mayor, um, he, sort of, he sort of comes with the office. Um, I described him in one publication as the mayor whisperer. Uh, that's just one of many roles. Um, you know, like you said, you wouldn't call him just a lawyer. You wouldn't call him just a politician. Uh, he, he just is one of these pillars. When you hear the term pillar of the community, when you hear, hear the term uh, city father or elder, elder statesman, uh, he wore all those hats, and uh, he was just a guy who, who answered the call. Uh, he was so knowledgeable and such a diplomat and such a doer and so wise uh, that for a new mayor coming in, uh, you know, there's no real training for mayor. You know, I was a county commissioner, a state representative, a state senator. I worked for a senator for years. I learned a lot from him. But being a legislator is a lot different than being mayor, where you're CEO and now running things. Uh, so I had a group of advisors, um, sort of the board of directors, and Jack was principal among them. Um, and he became a good friend. He became a close family friend. Uh, it's a big loss for my wife as well. Uh, he just had that way. He, he led with such humility and such grace. Uh, it wasn't you know, it wasn't like, well, I'll help you if this, or I'll do this. It was never transactional. You knew that Jack was going to be there. He was there before you got there. He was going to be there uh, throughout your, your, your challenges and the duration of your service. And he was likely going to be there after you left. And that's exactly the way it was with Jack. He was, he had your back. He was at your side. He loved this city more than anything, Burl. He loved this city. He was of Lansing. He was proud of that. You know, there are people that try to shake that off where they're from sometimes, no matter which city it is. Uh, you know, he went to Harvard. He was a state champion debater. Uh, he didn't have to come back to Lansing. The man, he had options. Uh, he picked up, uh, he, he married as he met and married his bride uh, in, in Wisconsin um, in, in, uh, uh, in school and undergraduate. And uh, you know, he was fortunate, but, but she was not from Michigan, so he didn't have to come back here, but he chose to come back to Lansing. And he truly, when you hear the term favorite son, I think he was Lansing's favorite son. Uh, he, he loved this city. He gave back. He never stopped giving back. He always answered the call. I don't care what it was, big or small. Uh, you'd call Jack. You know, he would always return the call, always in a timely fashion, sometimes in the middle of the night. And he'd be working. He'd be at the office working. I mean, here the guy's 80 years old. He never quit working. He loved this city. He stood for what he believed. And he left an incredible uh, example uh, for us to try to emulate if we dare. Uh, Robin uh, Verge uh, mentioned uh, Jack's uh, humility and grace. Uh, tell, us, uh, tell us your impressions of Jack. I'll tell you a quick story about his new... Um, I... You know, like I, I met Jack working on the middle school task force. I just assumed he was just like me, a regular parent, any other body who just cared about the schools and wanted to improve the schools. So Jack and I became immediate friends. And like Bird said, if you didn't want to know the truth, you didn't ask Jack. 
And so you, so we met, we connected, we clicked. He, he gravitated towards my kids. And so I went back to someone, um, I was just sharing how much I like him and what kind of, he's, he's just this down to earth guy and things like that. And someone said to me, oh, you're just saying that because he's rich. And I'm like, he's rich too? <laughs> you know? so that never came up with him. I mean, I'm just like, wow, he has all of this and he has money, you know? So that was Jack Davis. That was Jack Davis. And um, he, as has been stated, he loved, if you said something about Eastern, oh my goodness, he was going to fight you, you know? So he fought for Eastern till the end. And, um, and but he, he did it for all the schools, but he was definitely a champion for Eastern. And um, I, you know, my heart is, is hurting, but it's also filled with joy with many, many more stories that I could share about my relationship with Jack and what I saw him do for, you know, using his, his privilege for good. And um, I, I really admired him for that. Um, like I said, I admired his integrity. I admired um, what he stood for. He didn't have to, as, as Bruce said, do any of this. He chose to do these things. And that's what I admire about him. And um, I think, you know, I wonder who the next Jack Davis is going to be because it's going to be really challenging for anyone to stand up and do for this city, for the, his friends, for anybody who knew him. Um, it's going to be a challenge. And, you know, he, sh he really showed no signs of slowing down. I mean, this no. was a brief no. illness. Uh, and Jack had so much more that I know he wanted to do for our community. Verge, uh, Robin uh, touched on one of his characteristics, which is he didn't pull punches. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm sure he, you probably got some advice you didn't want. Oh, no question. Uh, and, uh, but again, ever the diplomat. Uh, mm -hmm. I, can't, I can't think of really any ugly words Mm -hmm. uh, that we ever share. And, you know, I can think of a lot of spats that I had with certain newspaper publishers <laughs> um, or, or even staff, because I encouraged my staff always to give me their honest opinion, and they did. And, you know, we had some real go-rounds. Uh, I'm passionate, and I, I, I like people that are passionate, and Jack was that. But Jack had his own, he was soft-spoken. And, you know, praise God that we're not all the same, right? I mean, everybody, we have different styles. And uh, his style was, I, I just looked back, I'm in awe now. Uh, my wife and I, you know, spent time talking about it in these, la these last hours. I mean, we miss him already so much, uh, like you all. Uh, anybody that's worked with him, uh, the way he conducted himself, the way he comported himself, he was ever the gentleman. Uh, he, and yet here again, state champion debater, Harvard Law graduate, very successful, wealthy, uh, never wore it on his sleeve, any of that. But, but Robin got to, you know, this thing about Eastern. How many of us, how many people do you know are loyal to, not only to their city, you know, to their college, he always went back for the Harvard reunion, but to their high school you know, to their elementary. He, he, he kind of came back to serve on the school board. Very few people of his pedigree, of his education level, go back to their community and serve on the school board. And not in a haughty fashion, not in a fashion, oh, you're lucky I'm here. Working, befriending, uh, working, pulling up alongside, willing to do the heavy lifting, you know, shoulder to shoulder. Uh, I, I never, you know, he almost never called me even though he could have any time, and I would have appreciated it, he almost never called me to say, hey, Verge, you know, you're screwing up in this way. He always took my call. And like Robin said, he would give me the unvarnished opinion. But he was not one to try to impose his will. Uh, now, on the school board, he had a position. He took that position seriously. Um, but I think he was an advisor to many, many I know he was an advisor to, to all the mayors in his time, but I think he was an advisor to many. He was a trusted voice. Again, that elder statesman, and that's no small thing. Again, there's no training for the job I did as mayor, and you can see mayors on the spotlight right now. You turn on any news channel, it's mayor this, mayor that. Mayors are on the front lines, and, and there's almost no training for it. 
um, you're thrown into the fire. And so you need a council of advisors and people like that, that you can trust that the, that, and he's willing, he was always willing. And, and not only just for advice, he'd say, okay, what do we do? What do we, yeah, you know, how do you want to attack this? And he would be ready to go to bat for the city of Lansing. Uh, if I had trouble reaching out, reaching, getting through to somebody, you want me to call him for you? You know, I'll set up a meeting, blah, blah, blah. You know, they would take his call. They would always take Jack's call, even if they wouldn't take mine. Uh, it's just a guy that, you know, you, you, every city should have a Jack Davis. Uh, he will, he, he will be, he's missed already. He will never be forgotten by the people that worked for him. The legacy he's left behind, as Robin said, uh, the shoes that are left to be filled, if we dare try. And hopefully we all try. I, I, to me, he raised the bar. He raised the bar for all of us. He's, he's a much better leader than I could ever imagine being. But I sat last night again, just in awe, thinking about how he did this, how carefully he did it, so that sometimes you didn't even know, you didn't even realize that he was nudging you over to where you needed to be. <laughs> Robin, uh, you worked with him on the school board, and that was very, uh, very important to him. Uh, and he was president of the school board twice. What, what difference uh, did his leadership make? <laughs> Jack can multitask like anybody, I mean, it's, he would bring his big briefcase full of his work and, and stuff, and you would think Jack's not listening, and because he's doing all this other stuff. And, and I would look over at him every now and then, like, are you paying attention? And as soon as the presentation would be over, we are thinking, oh, he wasn't even paying attention. He'll raise his hand, or he'll wait, and he'll go back to, okay, now I'll date myself. he go, on slide number five, paragraph two, <laughs> He was so intense on, I mean, the, the, what, when he sat there, whether we thought he wasn't paying attention or not, he paid attention to every presentation, to everything that came forward. He dissected every contract. He looked at everything when, and it, it was just amazing the things that this man could do. And um, so I learned, I learned from him that you really need to pay attention and to I learned to ask the right questions from him and demand the right answers from him. He did not allow people to slack. And um, I like that about him. And um, sometimes it came across wrong to people, but it was his care and, and it would come across wrong if you didn't scratch the surface to get to know who Jack was. And underneath that gruff, underneath whatever people saw, was the kindest, soft-hearted hearted man that I've met in a long, long time. To come from a different background, to come from different religious beliefs, but the man cared, he genuinely cared about people. He genuinely cared about the folks who he was serving. And he served. He didn't want to be served, he served. Amen. And I learned, I learned those characteristics about that early on from him. Um, like I said, I, I met him when I was um, not even an elected official. And um, so I learned a lot about, um, about how to serve from him. I remember watching some of those meetings, Burl, uh, and even going to a couple. Jack, you know, did not suffer fools. No. Uh, if somebody gave a presentation, you know, you better bring your A game. You better. He's exactly right. He, <laughs> as, a, as a public official, and I knew him mostly, you know, as an as informal advisor and friend, but as a public official, when he was up there at the rostrum, uh, somebody's given a presentation, you better, you better be on your game. You better have the facts. He is going to use those debate skills and those Harvard Law School skills. And believe you me, the people are going to get their money's worth although I know school board is unpaid, um, he had a job to do. And like you say, in that official capacity, he's going to put you through the ropes. Now, again, uh, he'll be kind and all that, but, but he, he will be tough. You know, it's the old tough love approach. I saw some of that tough love off the roster of the school board. Um, and I meant to mention, bro, you know, one of the huge things he did for this city, for this region, uh, was, you know, I don't know that we would have LEAP, the Lansing Economic Area Partnership. You know, I was mayor when that was put together. Um, that was no easy thing to, to have business people 
come even just having business competing businesses come together under one one roof under the the umbrella of let's work together and grow the pie instead of just fighting over the pie as it is let's grow the pie for everybody that's the notion of a regional economic development entity that brings governments together as well and you know governments can be very uh, picayune and and protective uh, about uh, you know in their in their uh, bailiwicks in their silos about no no we want the economic development here no we want it here in this township no we want it here we get so busy and what was happening what had happened there was a long history of uh, local governments fighting each other for the economic prize and so uh, uh, the idea came of uh, with Soji Adelaja at MSU and others that we could uh, with uh, the accident fund that we could uh, Liz Har that we could create this uh, new entity, Lansing Economic Area Partnership, a regional approach to economic development. Well, it was, it was a foreign concept in Lansing. And uh, it was the, the quiet, effective, diplomatic, but consistent uh, and persistent leadership of Jack bringing people together because when they didn't trust each other, everybody trusted Jack. And I remember some heated dialogue uh, with the president of Capital National Bank, for example, who was a hard charging guy, uh, Joe, Joe Reed. I remember, man, we got into some things because, uh, you know, he had a certain view about government and, and that government, you know, he questioned whether government should even be at the table in LEAP. And boy, we had some heated exchanges. Uh, that was never, uh, sadly, you know, you weren't in the room, Burl. Sadly, I never made it to the press, some of the inner, but uh, it was the Jack Davises who he'd let the debate, sometimes very heated, go on. And then when the sparring folks would, would sit back and glare at each other, Jack would clear his throat, say, okay, you know, we've heard from everybody. How are we going to resolve this? Mm -hmm. He was about resolving it, fixing it, and moving forward, making progress, always. Yes. And, and, you know, uh, Robin, I'm hard pressed to think of anyone who uh, was an enemy of Jack's. Uh, no. I, uh, you know, he took his tough stands, but yes. there was such respect for him. Absolutely. He, absolutely. I, I there's, there's no one, and, and I dare say no one uh, would, you know, um, he, he was, he, he had high expectations and he expected high expectations, but he was loving and kind and generous to a fault. You know how he loved to travel and he would, whenever he would travel, he would always bring back something that was unique to that person. You know, it wasn't just something he found in the, in the um, gift shop, you know, in the airport, it was an afterthought. You could tell he put a lot of thought into what he was gonna bring back for that person. So if I gave you that impression, that is not the impression I want you to leave with. No, 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 I did. And by the way, in this polarized age, uh, Burl, where everything between the parties, you know, seems to become almost to a personal and petty level, most of the time that I knew Jack, I never knew whether really he was a Democrat or Republican. I know, right? I still don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and it, didn't, it didn't matter and and because at that level it's not that issues didn't matter but mm -hmm. it wasn't about party it, it wasn't no. about being uh, having an ortho a, a loyalty a fealty to a particular orthodoxy the the philosophy was one of helping humanity it was, he was definitely shared he was opportunity right or wrong black or white he was he, that was it with jack there was nothing you know he was and the Quakers. And the Quakers. If he belonged to a party, if he yes, belonged to a party, yes. it was the Eastern Quaker Party. Yes, um, yes, yes. He was loyal, but again, the loyalty to his school, mm -hmm. his uh, his city, you know, mm -hmm. sometimes, and I tell you, it can be a lonely place, just like I'm sure the school board, Robin, I'm sure there were times when you felt like, you know, especially in the early days, you know, who loves Lansing? Who's there for Lansing? When you're, when you're getting inundated with budget cuts and other challenges, you know, who's there? Well, your, 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 your uh, um, Jack Davises, of course, your, your Kelly Deans. I mean, you got those stalwarts, your Dominic Carbone. You know, you got those people that are, you know, are in your corner. And in the city of Lansing, any mayor, any city, 
you're under siege. You have all these challenges, the police challenges, the water, the roads, you know, the sewer. Almost nobody comes to you with good news. Um, you know, you, 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 you grow to, to fear the phone call or the knock on the door because it's not good news. But so you need, you rely on those Jack Davises that say, I mean, he is a partisan for the city. He, he, if, if, if he believed in anything, he came from Lansing and he, and he bled for Lansing. Whatever Lansing needed, the guy never said no, whether it was boots for the kids, coats for the kids, yeah. you know, yeah. you name it, he was there. And like, Jack, like uh, Robin said, yeah, he had the money and, and uh, he, was, he was generous with it, way, way more than most people. Uh, it, uh, he, he just didn't know how to say no to, to a good cause. And not only that, he was willing to go to bat. Not only would he just give, throw some money at you to shut you up, he'd, he'd call his friends and he'd, uh, for the cause he believed in. And it, and it often was young, disadvantaged kids. He yes. believed that every child should have real opportunity. Absolutely. And, and my daughter was a beneficiary of that. He, I went, I always say, I lost Jack as a friend when he met my daughter because he, she took her on and helped her in ways that just, um, we went to a Chamber of Commerce dinner. Al Roker was there and um, Rita came along with me and she and Jack made instant friends again. He um, let her work in his law firm, even all through high school. And even when she went off to U of M um, um, to come, when she came home on break, he allowed her to work. And, and they still, to this day, I mean, they, last time they met, she was home. She lives in DC now. They went out to breakfast, you know? So whenever they were able to see each other, they would see each other. And he followed all of my kids all the way through high school, college, uh, I still ch um, checks on him. And you talk about his 81 years young, as I, I call Jack, you know, he was getting ready to, to ride his bike again. You know, when I text him recently, just to check on him, he goes, I'm bored. I'm sure you are, Jack. <laughs> oh, <laughs> You're the man who stays up 18 hours a day, you know, working. I'm sure it's shutting you down. I'm sure you're bored, you know? So oh, this drove him crazy. This, yes. <laughs> this stay at home thing was just, he didn't complain. The funny thing about Jack, because he almost never complained about anything. I never heard the man talk about an ache or a pain, and he must have had a couple. Right. Uh, but, but almost never complained about anything. I never heard him say a crossword about a person. Never heard him say, but I wish I could say the same of myself. It gives us something to strive for. It gives us, a, the Jack Davis model gives us all something to strive for. But the one thing I do, he did, the, the staying at home was really getting on his nerves, especially when the weather, when it was cold and he couldn't get on the bike, you know, he couldn't work out. Uh, there was nobody at the office to, to uh, give out, to, to get any assistance from. Uh, he was a little bit technically challenged, but he was learning all that. Yes. Yes. Um, well, I want to thank both of you, and I certainly want to express uh, our heartfelt condolences to his wife, Sue, and uh, yes. their children. And, you know, these, these are difficult times. If uh, uh, under normal circumstances, people would probably fill a place like the art auditorium to say goodbye to Jack. You got that right. Not, unfortunately, going to be able to do that. Uh, but down the road, uh, I'm sure there will be some celebration we can all join in. We've touched on part of his life. Uh, I, I'm going to reach out to some other people because there's the art side. There's yes. uh, and then he was a lawyer and he loved yes. being a lawyer. So yes. there's so much more we can talk about. But I want to thank uh, uh, Robin Lewis, uh, who worked with Jack on the school board, and Virge Bernero, who worked with Jack behind the scenes on mm -hmm. many, many things. Thank you so much for sharing your uh, stories. Thank you so oh, much. You're welcome. Robin. Thanks for the Great opportunity. Man. Appreciate you're it. You're welcome. And uh, thank you all for listening for City Pulse. I'm Burl Schwartz.